Hello, good afternoon. CTS 266, Section 840 students for the Spring 2016 semester at Anne Arundel Community College. This is the Cisco Networking Academy Switch course, and this afternoon's video tutorial is going to be a tutorial on Discovery Activity number 14 from our Cisco Learning Labs curriculum, where we're going to be taking a an introductory look, get our feet wet here with HSRP, or as it's commonly referred to, the Hot Standby Router Protocol which is a Cisco proprietary solution to first hop redundancy. So you can see we have our topology here in front of us. So let's go ahead and dive in and we'll kind of have a conversation as we move through this activity. So step one, we need to configure the Ethernet 01 LAN facing interface of R1. So here's R1 and this would be the LAN facing interface, again, facing the LAN toward the hosts. So let's click on R1 here and let's go from user exec into privilege exec. And then we're going to go into global config and interface Ethernet 01. So before we change Ethernet 01, let's see what does Ethernet 01 have set up right now. So we'll say do show run interface Ethernet 01. So currently no IP address, really no configuration at all. So in fact, before we kick this off, let's make sure we capture everything we can with some debugs. Because the debugs tend to tell a story. Um, debug IP HSRP, or is it debug HSRP? Hold on one second. HSRP debug, I know it's in here. I'm drawing a complete blank right now. As to. I thought it was debug IP HSRP, and it's not. Yeah, so that's the debug VRRP, HSRP. Give me one second here, because I could have sworn that it was debug HSRP, and I just want to make sure that this isn't one of those uh, issues that we have when we're talking about um, some of the commands that aren't uh, available to us. Oh, debug standby. Debug standby. There we go. All right, so we're going to say debug standby, and we're going to basically look at everything we've got here. So we'll go into global config, and let's go back into interface Ethernet 01, and we're going to put an IP address on here. Now, this is going to be the real IP address for this interface. So 192.168.1.3. And again, this is the IP assigned to the physical interface on this router. This is not the HSRP IP address. Now we're going to say standby. And remember, the group number can be anywhere from 0 to 255. However, we're just going to say standby 1. If I didn't put anything, it would be group zero. So let's say standby one IP. Now here is the virtual IP address of the HSRP um, router. And so this is the IP that's going to be shared between router one and router two. So let's hit enter here. And as you can see, take a look, we've got some HSRP information showing up already, telling us that we went from disabled uh, to the in, init state here, as you can see. If we take a look down here, our MAC address got filled in. So there's that MAC address, that AC01. It looks like it already went past us on the screen here. Uh, but again, you can see that we're going from standby to active here at the very, very end. And that went by pretty quick. So again, there's that AC01. And the 01 is the group number but it's the group number in hexadecimal. So what else do we see taking place here? So every three seconds, we should be seeing, so 53, 56, 50, so just around every three seconds, we're going to see the HSRP hello packets going back and forth. And well, right now there's really nobody to go uh, forth to, <laughs> and then nothing's gonna be coming back right now, uh, but we're gonna fix that here. Uh, on router 2 or on R2. So on R2, uh, let's go ahead and work with R2 here. And we're going to do the exact same thing. Uh, we're going to go into privilege exec 
into global config interface ethernet 01 we're going to put an ip address on here and again this is the physical ip uh, of the interface and now we're going to put the standby ip right or the hsrp ip group one ip and remember the group number uh, needs to match 192.168.1.1 and if we come back over here we should see some activity popping up over here now it's interesting that we uh, we use dot three over here on router one because the router if there's no priority set between the routers the router with the highest IP address is going to become the active router so if I was to say do show standby right now you can see that we are the active router and again the priority by default is 100 if I come over to router 2 and I say do show standby we are the standby router and again we're running version 1 of HSRP so the group number can be anywhere from 0 to 255 the default priority is 100 the highest IP if a priority is not set the highest IP address will end up being the active router by default and so right now what we have is we have this is our active router this is the standby router and then I kinda like the way they do this uh, in the in the text as well as in this lab here this is the 192.168.1.1 and this is our virtual router so to speak right and it can float back and forth between these two routers if one of them were to fail so right now it's active over here and so that MAC address that you saw the 0.0.0.0 Charlie and actually I'm gonna have to go take a peek real quick I know we've got AC01 at the end whoops ran too far back there and let me take a peek here and see yeah zero Charlie zero seven that was correct okay so we'll come back over here so we've got that zero Charlie zero seven want to make sure we get that right because this is important so zero Charlie zero seven period alpha Charlie and then I'll put XX here where the XX is going to be the group number it's the group number uh, in hexadecimal so we chose group number one which keeps it simple so it's just simply going to be zero one now if you had a larger number remember it's very easy very easy to make the transition uh, from uh, decimal when you choose the group number to hexadecimal so if I were to say uh, the group number was 129 all I need to do is put this into binary so 128 and I picked a very easy number here as you can see 0001 so that's 129 and then just between the high order 4 bits and the low order 4 bits put a little line here and then this value so in hexadecimal it would be 81 so we could say 0x 81 is equal to 129 in decimal so here's my group number and very simple for me to break that into binary and then to get my hexadecimal equivalent and that's the number that would show up here so real quickly let's check and let's see if that's right so let's break this and we'll come back over here on to and actually to be a little easier over here uh, on to uh, router 2 if we were to say standby 129 uh, and then let's go ahead and say how we're going to do this here well, let's put another IP address in here 10.10.10.1 uh, it's got to be the subnet on the interface so let's go ahead we're going to steal it 192.168.1.1 and then we'll say no standby one I was hoping it was going to change it for us there um, IP address 192.168.1.1 do show run in Ethernet 01. Let's see what we have on here now. So no standby 129 IP 10.10.10.1. No standby 1 IP 192.168.1.1. So if I was to say standby, and you can see we just disabled our group there. We went from standby to disabled. Standby 129 
IP address 192.168.1.1, right? So uh, do show MAC address table. Do show MAC. Let's say show MAC address. No, it doesn't like that. So let me see here. Let's drop down. Let's see what the switch ASWO2 shows. Show MAC, MAC address table. There we go. All right, so it's still showing AC01. Let's say clear MAC address table. And we're going to clear dynamic. All right. And let's see if we can ping 192.168.1.1. Can't do that, so let's say show MAC address table, and there we go. That's what we were looking for. So 81 in hexadecimal. All right, it's kind of a long way around, but again, just to show you that that's exactly what that value is. So let's head back to router 2, and let's properly sort things out. So there's our duplicate IP address, uh, which we should be seeing. So let's go into global config, interface Ethernet 01. Uh, and we're going to go ahead with no standby 129 IP address 192.168.1.1 and we're going to say standby group 1 IP 192.168.1.1. All right, so now we're back uh, to where we were initially. And again, remember that you're seeing the standby status here do show standby do show is there a standby brief i believe standby brief there we go and we've got the do show standby brief which kind of gives us a and you can see we went from speak to standby so now we're in the standby state let's see if it's a little different there we go so standby is local my state is standby the active is 192.168.1.3 that's router one and we already saw the MAC address table entries in there. So let's go ahead now and transition on to step three on router one. And we're going to say, I want to see what the ARP cache has for us here. Do show IP ARP. And so here's the ARP entry. And let me actually say you all, let's kill the debugs for right now. So if we take a look here, there is the MAC address table entry for the IP 192.168.1.1. And again, you can see it's got that AC and then the number at the end, the last two hexadecimal characters of the group number uh, in hexadecimal. All right, so finding the active router. So finding the active router is not too difficult. Again, the show standby command is going to make it very, very simple. Um, from the PC perspective, and actually let's see here, uh, we've got, what job aids do we have here? Yeah, so 192.168.4.22, again, pretty, really nice drawing here. Let's make that a little larger so we can take a look at it. There you go. So again, really nice drawing. It kind of shows you that, you know, the first hop redundancy protocol virtual IP address that kind of floats between these two guys based off of whichever one's going to be active um, will have ownership of that. So let's see, can I ping 192.168.4.22 from PC1? So let's say uh, ping 192.168.4.22. We're going to have to ARP out, I'm sure, and then it works. So even more important, let's say traceroute 192.168.4.22. And you can see the first hop, you'll notice it doesn't say it's going to the virtual IP. It actually shows you it's going to router 1, then it goes to 192.168.22, and then we get to our final destination. So again, when we look at the job aids, the first hop for this guy was right here, router 1's IP. And then I went to 2.2, which is right here on router 3, and then I made it to my destination. So the trace route shows that's the direction it's going. Let's see what PT PC2 shows. PC2 should be showing us the same thing, although he should be going up and across those access layer switches. So we're able to ping, and can we trace route here? Let's see. And sure enough, he also takes 
that same path. Now his path is a little longer because he's going to come here to ASW1, the access layer switch, I'm sorry, ASW2, and then he's going to cross over, right? So and again, typically this is not what you're going to see. You're not going to see interconnectivity between the access layer. Typically what you're going to see is you've got your access layer switch, uh, but then there's no connection here. You've got somewhere in here, you've got your distribution layer switches. And so you'd have connections like this, like your classic bow tie without that there. And then these guys would be connected. And this is where you would typically find your first hop redundancy protocol, and then they would connect into router three. Again, just given the scenario that we've got here, notice that PC2, his traffic let me change colors here to blue. His traffic comes up to ASW2, but then it comes this way and goes up that way. And so why doesn't it go this way? Well, because the default gateway statement on this PC says go to 192.168.1.1. And so when he ARPs out for the MAC address, right, he says, hey, I need to get to this guy. Who's got the Mac? The Mac is here, but the forwarding table on ASW02 is going to say you've got to go this way across the trunk link, and that would be the outgoing port. So let's take a look at that from the command line. Let's jump onto ASW2 here, and if I were to say show Mac address table, right, and this becomes very important here, you can see that, sorry about that, it's kind of all over the place. Ah, there we go. And you can see right here on the very top entry, it's Ethernet 01. So for me to get to that MAC address, and that's going to be the MAC address that when I ARP out saying, hey, I need to get to my default gateway, how do I get there? I'm going to go up to the access layer switch and out Ethernet 01. If we look over here, if we clear the screen here and we look over here Ethernet 01 is right there that is the outgoing interface so the traffic comes this way crosses over because this is where out that interface right there is where I have to go to get to the MAC address of my default gateway all right so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip things around you'll notice that on router 2 it was the standby router it still is the standby router if I say show standby you can see I'm the standby so now we're going to spice things up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and go into interface Ethernet 01, and we're going to say standby 1, and we're going to set the priority. Remember what we said before. Priority value can be anywhere from 0 to 255. The default's going to be 100. If it's even and it's not set, then the host with the highest IP address on the segment where we're doing the virtual IP, then, excuse me, that host would be the active router. All right, so let's go ahead now and let's change the priority here. Oops, sorry, I'm going to change it to 110. So we're making it 10 higher uh, than the default value. However, do show standby still shows that I'm the standby router. And I actually ran into this a couple weeks ago in a production environment where we were making some changes and the show standby command was missing off of a partially configured router. And if you don't have the command in there and you're tracking an interface on the primary, even though the primary or the active HSRP router decrements the priority, if you don't have the preempt, standby one preempt statement on the secondary, even though he has a better priority like we do right now, come take a look over here on router one. Router one still thinks that he is the active router, the active node in this standby HSRP group, even though router two has a higher priority. And you can see right down here at the bottom where it says priority 100, default 100. Now take a look here, standby router, priority 110. Well, why are we not failing over then? And again, it all comes down to preemption, right? We have to enable preemption. So let's do that. Let's go into global config interface Ethernet 01. Say standby one preempt. All right, now does that change? Oops, sorry. Does that change anything? So let's say do show standby. 
No, I'm still the active. Remember, the preemption means the router with the better priority is going to preempt or take on the role of being the active router. So interface Ethernet 01 on this side. So we're going to interface Ethernet 01. And we're simply going to say, sta oops, sorry, standby 1 preempt. Now we should see something happen because we've got preemption configured, and we do. So we've got this HSRP state change. For group one, we went from standby to active. And what, what should we see over here on router one? Exactly. We went from active to speak. And so we're going to try to figure out what are we, who are we supposed to be. So do show standby. And you can see that we are in the standby state right now. Router two, do show standby. Router two is now the active HSRP node in the group, right? Uh, and again, on router two, if I were to say do show standby brief, uh, you can see right here that who is the standby router? Well, the standby router is 192.168.1.3. That's router one. But for group one with a priority of 110, I am the active router, right? And here, oh, and the, it, you can see the P indicates configured to preempt, right? So we are set up to preempt. I'm active, right? Who is the active? The local router is active. And what's the virtual IP? The virtual IP is 192.168.1.1. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look uh, at a failover here. So we're going to do on PC1, we're going to say ping. And actually, we'll do the repeat first. Say ping 192.168. Oops, sorry, 192.168.4.22, and we're going to say repeat, and we'll put a whole bunch of zeros in here. All right, so this is going to generate all kinds of traffic from PC1, uh, and what's going to happen is, is the traffic's going to go to ASW1, the access layer switch one, across that layer two trunk link over to ASW02, and then up to router two, because now remember. Now the MAC address, if I come on to ASW01 and let's go into privilege exec and say show MAC address table, where do I have to go? If I get to this switch, which I'm directly connected to, how do I get to the MAC address? Quad 00, zero Charlie 07, Alpha Charlie 01. I have to go out my Ethernet 01 interface. And if we look here, it's this interface. Because remember, that MAC address is now being advertised by router two. Router one has withdrawn that advertisement because he is the standby, standby router. Router two is now the active router. So we have to come over to Ethernet 02. So Ether, or, I'm sorry, ASW2. So on ASW2, if I were to say, show MAC address table, it's gonna say that to get to that MAC address, which is my default gateways MAC, now I go out Ethernet 02. So I go out this interface right here because that is where the virtual IP lives, right? So you can simply follow it from a layer two perspective. It's going to have to ARP out uh, if it doesn't have it in the cache. And these switches right here are going to update every time the HSRP virtual IP swings over to one or the other, router one or router two, based off of whoever is active. All right, so let's kick this ping off here on PC1. And let me make sure I see what they're going to ask us to do. We're going to simulate a failure. So we're going to shut down the Ethernet 01 interface on router 2 to see what happens. Let's see how many ping packets we lose. So there goes our ping. I come on to router 2. Ah, All right, this has happened before with the web telnet where it's actually going to hold hostage. And let me try the control shift 6 there. Oops, sorry. Let's try Control Shift Six. There we go. All right, we did get into Router Two, so let's try it again here, and let's quickly try. Oops, sorry. Quickly try to get over to Router Two. All right, so here we are on Router Two. So let's quickly move into Interface Ethernet Zero One and say shut. If we come back to PC One, you can see there was one ping packet that missed. And then it flipped over immediately. So now over here on router one, we want to go ahead and check to see who is the active HSRP router right now. 
and hopefully we're going to be able to do that here. Uh, even the control shift six is not helping me right now. And I'm hoping we're not going to have to wait for these pings to finish here. All right, we'll give it a second. All right, there we go. So now on router one, if I were to say show standby, router one is now the active router. You can see right here, last state change was 48 seconds ago. If I come over to router two, the interface is down. Right, the router to Ethernet zero one interface is down right now, uh, and it looks like we're still waiting for some pings to wrap up here. And so, what's going to happen is our state should show on router two, we should show as unknown, because again, our interface that's participating in HSRP is completely down. And let's see what's going on here. This lab was going to be wrapping up shortly anyway. We were just simply going to bring the interface back up and show that it can come back up on its own. Uh, and it looks like we're having all kinds of issues here with that ping uh, that we ran. All right, so we may be cutting away here. I'm, let, me, let me go ahead and pause real quickly and see if we can sort this out to wrap things up. I'll be right back. All right, I actually had to reload the browser page here. Let's see what we've got. If I say no shut, right, we should see over here on router one when I say show standby that we're going to be in the speak state and then we're going to transfer into the standby state. So state is speak and now state is standby because we figured out through the hello packets that go back and forth every three seconds that do show standby. Router two has a higher priority configured so now to finish things up here and oh boy I'm hoping that <laughs> it's still going oh man okay so anyway we'll go ahead and wrap up here and actually let me go ahead and we'll reload this page we'll force it to reload and that worked last time there we go so um, we'll go to PC2 here <laughs> so on PC2 if I was to trace route to the 192.168.4.22, uh, we should make our first hop to the 192.168.1.2, that's router two, and then up to router three, and then out to our destination. And PC1 would do that same thing. Unfortunately, PC1 is in a ping loop right now. So uh, again, I apologize for that being in a ping loop there, but we've had this happen in IOU many times before. All right, well, this is going to wrap up discovery activity number 14. Again, a nice activity to kind of ease our way into HSRP, and it's all about first hop redundancy protocol, right? That's FHRP, and that's what you call the first hop redundancy protocols. It's just an FHRP. And within that family, you've got HSRP, GLBP, and VRRP. Now, remember, the key takeaway here is HSRP, sends the hellos out to the multicast address of 224.002, and that's a UDP packet on port 1985. And that's how it communicates with other HSRP routers. So when you initialize that standby command on the interface, like we did here on router one, show run interface ethernet zero one, when I drop that standby command in here on this interface, it is now listening for multicast packets that are destined to 224.0.0.2. And this is UDP packets headed to port 1985. All right, well, that wraps up our tutorial on HSRP. Uh, enjoy the rest of your spring break, and I will see you guys on Monday night.